start recording. Okay. <clears throat> so where we left off, we had just finished out the work on um, the the hashing, so we can identify different menu options. And um, so there's a couple of things to do to bring this back into back into working. Um, so the problem we're having right now is if we run it, and let's see if this is a bug on both of ours, is if we scroll down to um, foo, we are overriding a string that we shouldn't be, and the same with this one. So the way that we're generating the um, strings for um, <coughs> sliders and checkboxes seems to be broken. Oh, wait, I'm at, I'm actually having the... Oh, no. Come on, well, I think, I think we were kind of demonstrating that, so maybe I just never backed out that change. Okay. Hold on a sec. Oh. Or was it that you were going to, you were going to paste me the code or something like that? I think maybe... Oh, uh, no, I, got I slapped it together very quickly at the last second, but let's go fix that, because I think that's an easy fix. So let's come up to our main menu call. Oh, man, where is that? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the hash. Oh, yeah. I got rid of the. Yeah, I got rid of the the thing. I'm just yep. So of... what's? Oh yeah. This, so this next ID is not doing what it should be doing. So I mean, let's debug that. I mean, it's working on mine, but it's not working on yours. So let's try. And oh, that's because I is that because I did the mixin bit like when we use the end of the last hash or the mm. data from the last hash to distribute. I think that's that's what we want, and this should be zero initially. And, um, and it will it will be zero because it's a value type, so it's auto zeroed. So it's probably uh, it's probably the internal get ID. Uh, okay. Just ignore that one. And yeah, that's the only thing that I didn't have was I never I didn't get to the fixed one, but that's that's fine. Um. Okay. So value ID. Wait. Label. Wait. Internal get ID. Oh, I see. Stream. Oh, you found it? Um, well, yours has this interesting thing going on here. Um, uh, I can't reply to that. Um, oh, wait. Wait, why is this being ID'd out? Defaulted. <clears throat> oh, no, I guess that's... that. Yeah, that's fine, because that was the next one. We're returning the hash after... Um, it's distributing it into the previous one. Uh, <coughs> I really don't so, know why mine's so different than yours. Well, um, this is odd. I'm not sure that actually has any effect. It shouldn't, but it's also unnecessary. Like you're XORing it. With, oh no, I know exactly what's happening. Haha, <laughs> this is a fun bit of, this is a fun bit of maths. Let's, let's whiteboard this. So see how you've got this extra line here, the one you have highlighted, hash XOR next. Yeah, because I forgot to delete it. Yeah. S yeah, so like if, if our, <laughs> if our hash value, I'm just to use four bits for this, is like it comes out as one, one, zero, one. And our next idea is like, um, we're going XOR, um, say it's one, zero, uh, no, sorry, zero one zero one. So we'll do the XOR. So if they're the same, um, they um, hang on, how do you XOR? So uh, if they're this, why have I just blanked on how to XOR things? Um, if they are the same, you get a zero, and if they're different, you get a one. I'm um, doing it twice. But I'm probably guaranteed to get a zero, aren't I? Well, watch what happens when we then do it by the same value zero one zero one so this is just an inter yep. interesting mathematical thing it's like oh they're different oh they're the same oh they're different oh they're different and you'll see you basically by doing it twice you undo the operation that's awesome so that's a handy like little thing to know because you know that that mechanic can uh be useful in places but obviously here it's the opposite of useful uh so i guess yeah. Yeah, if you're doing some kind of stateless accumulator and you want to kind of do an undo feature you could probably just repeat the instruction or something but 
Yep. So if you wipe those excess lines, you should be able to um, get back to your bug. Run it, uh, and uh, <laughs> well, we'll see. You'll see what what <laughs> other issues we can find. Okay, yeah, so well, that one's fine. So that's just a bug in mine. So let's just real quickly see. I've probably just fat fingered something. Uh, well, it's probably during the fix ID bit because I don't have that. That's the delta. Slider and checkpoints. Uh well, okay, let's add fixed ID. Um, so, because that's really easy. And so, um, so if I were to say, okay, if 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 you add a thing that stops the uh, hash that this returns from changing from next ID hash, like if, if you, right. so, so yeah, so if you insert a thing that stops it evaluating the hash of the argument passed in. Is that a thing that you can just code? Because it's a pretty slap it in sort of thing. Yeah, I think so. Hold on, let me just go find where we're doing the the usage code. It's starting to get kind of scrolly. Uh, right. So yeah, it was something like oh, I'm gonna stop the program. Something like you had it like a fixed ID, right, as a method. I believe so. <clears throat> and that's in. So yeah. Although we want to, well, no. What wait, it is is it's like you you say I want the next idea to have this component, and then I want to stop stop mutating it at that point. I want the next idea to have this component. So it's like I want the next idea to be I, and then I want to stop modifying it. So. Oh right, because this this next idea isn't just getting a an ID; it's getting the hash of I, and so this one's basically gonna queue it's just queuing one time i want to not <coughs> it, right? well, let's 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 not do it here because here you can imagine what's happening here your only part of this id now is this um number um that you're passing well, next time next id is getting called an item right you're you're setting you're setting the pending next thing to be hashed here and then yep. an item and then you're, you're getting so, it and, yeah so, so you can yeah. imagine you're mixing in that one I'm sort of waving at your screen so hopefully you can see it. But yeah, the next idea with the item text. Um, That's right. So you can imagine that um, if you were to say... You want them all to be the same. Well, okay, yeah. uh, let, let me give you an example. If, if, if I were to put like... Uh, I think I've just called it fix ID. But if I were to do that and then... Uh, <clears throat> well, that wouldn't make any difference, would it? Because fix ID is being called after I. <laughs> oh, no, that means... Every single one will have the same value. So you can see what I've done here, and you'll notice that now if I do this, yeah, the, the two different like kick player and like player, I'm gonna get It'll be the same. I'm gonna get uh, a selection here and here, a double selection because there's just the integer. So yeah, so let's let's that's use right. this other example that I did use because it's sort of the reason this exists, and that's if you're like animating the thing. So it's basically this code I have here. Oh, okay. I don't you've, have that. You've already, okay. got, have you've already got this uh, label date time now ticks. So change that to an item so you can select it, but you've already got it because uh, I, I um, originally deleted that. So that will cause selection issues. Um, but yeah, if you do it that way, Hold on. Uh, I yeah, I, I use I second because Tix, oh, Tix yeah. is going to flicker like mad. Yeah, plus, I got a. Why is that red? Uh, second. Oh, not second. second. Yeah. Totals. Yeah, I'm used to total seconds. So that's got to be. I got a scope issue here all over the place here. Okay, that's that's fine. Yeah, so you got to. All right. Um, yep. Yeah. And then this guy. Uh, where, where did that happen okay so this has got to be as probably as simple as is um queuing it right and saying don't um yep don't, don't use me or don't use what you think what you're about to use on the thing and i'm probably going to put that here and then um now that i have that i need to check it every time i go to get internal id um and i guess something like if fixed id then um fixed id is equal to false whoops mm -hmm. so i'm saying then up here um i guess the hash actually 
Hmm. Uh, I guess we could. Yeah, I guess we could do the whole ternary thing, right? That's how I did it because it's it's basically the same code flow. It's just canceling out a section of it. Yeah, right. So it's just like hash fix fix. So I guess you're always setting fixed ID to false then. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm just saying fixed ID. Other if it is a fixed ID, then we just want um, hash of the next ID hash, I guess. And mm-hmm. then we otherwise we want to mix the text in, and that should be it, right? That looks pretty good to me. Uh, what is but that I need to do it more than safe? one place. Uh, so you just need to copy it down, know. copy it down to this next one. Um, yeah. But now these both of these to dos are useless because uh, this is network safe because we've implemented our own hash, and it is. Right. Um, uh, it's it network safe builders. just because. Sorry. Right, because we're gonna. So I'm just saying we're. It's network safe because we're in the UI system state, and the only pieces of data we have are controlled by us. We would serialize them both, and then there's no uh, there's no chance that it's gonna go somewhere else or get off the um, path or whatever. Yes, but the the important bit is actually that we're calling uh, Murma hash three that we wrote ourselves and is sort of gonna be the same no matter what uh, system it runs on. Whereas if we're right. calling um, get hash code, get hash code, that's yeah, that's not. Uh, I think we mentioned it. Some uh, technically hash code is a per process, right? And um, it's also different on thirty two and sixty four bit. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, so fixed ID false. The only thing is you're missing fixed ID false, and then yeah. So string builder hash is useless. Well, we're not yeah. using that anymore either. String builder hash is useless. This note you've got here. Oh, that's not true. Well, it is true, but it's no longer relevant. Um, so that should that should now uh, with your animation, oh, right. that should work. Right, I forget. String builder hash just re- hash code returns something unhelpful, right? It just, just returns the, the hash code of the object. It doesn't touch the contents of the string builder at all. Right, right. Which so it's is absolutely what we want. garbage. Yeah, that's well, weird. Oh well. Okay. So um, yeah. Okay. So all good. So I guess I just run this and find out how busted mine is versus yours. Well, I have a feeling that yours is going to work now, and in a moment it's going to be my turn to sit down and debug something. So in theory, you should be able to select that blah option, and I can. And it doesn't change when the text changes, so it's now IDing off a. Different value, so perfect, absolutely yep. perfect. So, let's have a quick look at what on earth I've done to mine, because it's probably a simple mistake, but somehow I'm getting the carrot instead of the thing. So let's just debug this real quick. So um, I've selected the slider, and I'm going to scroll down to where I, where I can find slider in. And that's update, and this is draw slider, 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 slider. Um, I don't know if that's, uh, I think it's just a string. So, okay. <clears throat> so text coming in is my value. Uh, we've got a min max value. We clear the working buffer and we append this to it. And then we draw the working buffer. So I'll just run to here. Uh, where on earth is run to cross and there it is. Okay. So we've finally got a slider. We're passing it to draw item and we're getting the ID for the original text that we passed in, which was the name of the thing. Then we go into draw item and oh, we get internal ID on the text and then we draw item and this is where something's going wrong. Ah, so I am using the working buffer to append my carrot. And that's interesting because <clears throat> um, aren't you doing the same thing? I am. I am. Uh, but I'm in string builder, the string builder version of draw item. Do you not have a string builder version of draw item? Ah, it looks like I didn't um, make that one. Oh, yeah. So I went through and got rid of all these two strings, but you've got a couple left. Like, yeah. Got two strings. So, so I think we just, yeah. So I don't have any two string in mine. 
because obviously Whoops. we we want to get rid of two string because it generates garbage. So I think yeah, it looks like I did. I missed some to. I didn't have any to dos there, so I, I must have went past them. So I'll do that while you're still looking. Unless well, you think I mean, this is good. yeah. So this will this will cause you to have the same bug, but that's fine. Okay. Uh, so just get rid of these two strings now. Did you do this one too? Yeah, so every single one that's got a... Um... Oh, yeah, it makes sense. Oh, this looks like it becomes recursive, though. I don't know. How... I think I must have not fixed that one. Oh, oh yeah, no, we copied oh, we... it from uh, draw item here. So we should have... now. Yeah, that's right. I swear you made these changes, but that's... maybe I missed it. Okay, so yeah, so item, now both versions of it called uh, draw item. Right, <clears throat> that makes sense. This one does it. This one doesn't. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, rather than overloading itself, it's overloading the buffer version. Okay, that looks good. Hmm. Uh, should I rerun and yeah, find so the bug? Yeah, so just verify that you've uh, got the same problem now. Okay, so. Look good in the head over here. Uh, so scroll, select one of the um, uh, slider or the checkbox. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Never yeah. Mind. So you can see the problem. Yeah. And yes. um, so what's happened? The, and the, the bug, of course, is occurring. We build use use working, which is sort of a private member, to build up our um, our our output of for the slider. We pass it into draw item, which passes it, uh, which then goes ahead and is like, oh, if I'm focused, let's use the working buffer to construct the thing with the carrot on it. Right, we're killing it. So, how how would you approach fixing this issue? Um. Well, I I don't know. I'd probably add another buffer, but that's, maybe that's dumb. That's a pretty reasonable solution. <laughs> um. I wouldn't say no to doing that, honestly. Um, 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 is there any other way we could do it? Well, I mean, we're clearing it before we're pending this, so let's kind of um, not technically necessary, I guess, because you could just append this to the Oh no, never mind. Well, we're, yeah, we're passing in a text. I mean, we could call text dot insert and insert this carrot. So it's possible that we can avoid the clear. I mean, so <clears throat> we may as well do that. It's probably it probably is a little bit faster, but I mean, you still have to copy stuff around. So you, uh, you can imagine if if your buffer is you know uh, a b c d e f g, and then we're Going down to like, um, you know, that maybe EFG. So what we've done is we've had to go take this block of memory and copy it across by two places. And so whether you're copying it across by two places in the same buffer, or uh, if you're copying it to a separate buffer, either way you're making a copy. So yeah, on the plus side, if you're in the one buffer, you're in cache. Um, right. So, like, you're probably in cache the other way because it's so small, but at least this way you're sort of guaranteed to be in that position. Anyway, so I think that's a pretty reasonable way of going about it. So, um, okay. how would you... Well, I think I can... I think it's chaining, so I can just say insert um, zero. Whoops. Um, this. And then just continue with the append. That be it. Um, well, there's one issue here, and that is, if you uh, were to click on draw item and go find all references, and you'll see that draw item gets called by uh, checkbox. So checkbox is always going to pass in working, 
In fact, all oh. of these four are passing and working, but this one is passing in the user's string builder. This is so this is not our string builder to go touching. Right. Yeah, that's the yeah. So we actually have to come up with a solution to that in here or do something slightly different. So what do you reckon? Uh, I think it's safer just to use another buffer at this point. Okay, well, what I might put to you is we could do this. Because um, we know that working is private. It's ours. No one else outside us is going to touch it. So we can do this. If reference equals text working, um, we can then say... Oh, okay. Um, uh, we'll say text dot insert uh, zero and um, 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 that thing uh, else um, working dot clear dot etc etc and of course this is all in the case that it's selected so we need that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's ugly when it has. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm into it. Although, this is normally I see you don't you don't use reference equals you use um. Reference equality comparer dot instance. Uh. Thing. Okay, so that is when you're passing some a, a comparator to a container. When we're just doing a straight up equality comparison, you just call it um, directly. Okay. Okay, so this should work. Yep. I'm sure that will. I'm just I feel a like slow typer. Possibly this. Might, ah, be yes. more, might be more clear. It's a stylistic thing. It's sort of like either, either works. Yeah, right? I, I started um started doing that a lot. Oh, we don't technically need the arrow, but I guess the arrow is saying this isn't just a comma in the wrong spot. I really do mean. Yeah, I'm. I'm I was fixing the line. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, the arrow, the arrow is sort of just my style. I wouldn't wouldn't point anyone to doing that as a as a thing. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, thought I was about to sneeze. All right, <clears throat> so I think I think that's working, and so now if we run it, we should have. All this fun stuff, and we're also not ganking the user's variable. Oh, something bad happened to mine. Ah, okay. I didn't didn't see it. Um. Well, if you select foo, or I guess my foo is just disappearing. It's not yeah. Whatever I <laughs> whatever I uh, select is going away. I must have just snafu'd the. Okay. Well, that, that should be simple enough to fix. I'll just double check. Yeah. I haven't made Where did I put it? <clears throat> okay. So let's see. I mean, that code is identical, but oh no, I forgot the freaking label. Method. Oh. I have to actually do the thing. You're quite right. You should actually actually draw the output. <laughs> Would probably yeah. help. Seems like the right thing to do. Well, that was that was easy fixed. Yeah. Yeah. When I had it out of the scope before, I thought we were going to be doing manipulation and memory, and then never went back to fix it. Yeah, we're good. Easy peasy. Okay. All so right. We've done. We've caught up to everything we needed to be caught up to. So we've uh, fixed the bug uh, where string build was overriding itself. We've added fixed ID. 
got rid of all the garbage collection. So we've, we've, we've done a decent amount of cleanup. So is it uh, is that where we should stop, or do you think we should keep going? I'm just looking at my list. So the next thing to do would be um, to start thinking. Well, let's start just let's let's just do discussion on it. We won't probably code anything, but let's just run a copy of our thing so we can see it. Because what we as we discussed, the thing that we're going to do next is we're going to start adding mouse control to this. Right. And um, there is basically there's one thing that we need to figure out um, before we start that because there's there's sort of one problem here, one issue. So what what do you reckon we need to do to make to start adding mouse control? Like what what what's, um, what are the steps? <clears throat> uh. Well, we have to be able to um, per, like send an input to our update method uh, as if we were like, you know, obviously if we're hovering over something. Um, we want to simulate basically that we, you know, we got there by natural means. So especially if we're going over the network, we we'll probably want to keep things simple and not create a bunch of custom messages. So we probably want to send ups and downs and selects and so on right so okay, um, so, so, so that that's sort of a um like that's a very um river city networking sort of thing so if anyone sort of watching the idea is that when uh certainly our game and a lot of games if they do it this way um are sending messages across the network they only send controller buttons it's like up down left right select you know, A, B, select, start, or whatever. Um, <laughs> um, nice. And so if, you're, if you've got mouse inputs going, it's like, well, you know, then you have to either, you know, send the mouse position over the network, and that's going to be a problem because, you know, how big is your screen? If these things scale by resolution, you know, where are they? If this is, I mean, it's not at the moment, but say this menu was centered, then you know the mouse position if it's relative to here when you're hovering an op option you know that's going to change so you can't like in this case it's actually fine but you can imagine for a lot of menu layouts they're screen resolution dependent in some way or another um and so you know if the menu were on the right side but you were sending cursor coordinates from the left side they wouldn't line up across the network um if that makes sense. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. Although I've kind of already changed my idea of it because like, you know, in the case where, um, you know, you just kind of sneaking up on, on kicking Bob from your mouse cursor. Like if, if we're on options right now, which you are, if you're sneaking up like that on Bob, then I wouldn't expect it to go. I wouldn't expect to see the, carrot go down to bob sally fred rupert in order to kick the other bob so it kind of feels like maybe we need something different or maybe the mouse support has to kind of like figure out the delta or have a way of combining or or mutating the state setting the index directly something right. like that well so that's... otherwise you're going to get that weird cascadey thing right where it's just going to ripple through the menu items yeah even and... though you didn't do that yourself Exactly, and you can Sorry. imagine that could actually cause some oddities <clears throat> if, like, well, uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's the other way of doing it. Rather than sending just the inputs, you actually send, like, side channel messages of some description. It's like, now I'm selecting item whatever. Now I'm selecting item this other one. Um, and so that's another thing that we can do. Uh, so the thing about that is I think no matter what we do, the first thing we should do is just do mouse control in sort of the traditional ways, like direct single player uh, thing. And then once we have, you know, we can hover over thing by thing and select it and so on. Then we've got sort of half of the mouse stuff done and working. Then we could look into how to do it from a network perspective with, with like a constrained thing, a uh, constrained set of messages we can send. Um, hmm. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I jumped the gun on that. Although I'll ask next time when we are talking about. It. I'm curious as to 
other ways to do it. I, know, I mean, I'm aware of like lockstep and like whatever, but I didn't really think anyone wasn't sending inputs over the thing. But I guess that's what you mean by side channel. Like there's different ways to do it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I guess if we were doing just like, you know, just a reg like a local, you know, single player thing, then, um, you know, on update, we probably want the last mouse position type stuff. If it's not already, actually, it's already in the FNA template. So we have that. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we want uh, the the box. The sorry, the so-called hitbox, or like where where for each item that we're drawing, what is what is the um, the boundary around it? Um, the uh, what do you call it? The viewport, I guess, for each of the items, mm -hmm. um, or the rect the rectangle. I guess we need that. Yep. So uh, hitbox bound bounding rectangle. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and we need, well, we have, we have the current mouse position, I guess, already. So we just, we need to do a hit test Yep. Uh, in that bounding box. And then, uh, um, events, I guess, um, on, on, yeah, in, input dot left mouse down, um, check if you're over a button and if you are we have to select it um and then yeah we still need a solution for uh, i guess just setting the setting the um the index directly uh when you are hover when that when you pass the hit test for a particular item hmm. thinking about it now actually <clears throat> i think we could actually just dive in and do it i don't think there's anything like we will hit a bug uh we will, we will hit some design issues but we may as well just hit those design issues because I was like, what are, what are these design issues going to be? It's like, well, we may as well just plow ahead blindly and actually hit them because they're not that not that big a deal and not difficult to fix. So, um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Okay. do you want to do that now? Just do you uh, time check? If that's uh, uh, well, we are at, at the hour, but um, we did start. 20 minutes late so we could probably have a couple more minutes if we want to do that um so i mean let's let's start coding sure. like let's get into this <clears throat> let's 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 maybe start by being like all right we've got a mouse position um so over here um did we get rid of the i can't remember if we got rid of the happy face Oh, we still have the happy face. Oh. oh yeah, we've still got the happy face. So let's just draw the happy face in to start with. It's like, <coughs> uh, oh, it's right here. Um, so, I mean, one thing we can do is like input dot do we have mouse? Mouse position, so that's easy enough. Uh, we have as vector. we don't have as vector two, so maybe we should write that just to make life easy. Sure. Um, let's grab these. So floating point versions of this. So, <clears throat> um, as 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 I'm sure you know, like uh, the way that um I tend to do this normally is uh just be like mouse visual dot as vector two as an extension method, but we'll worry about that later and just do mouse position F for floating point. <clears throat> so now we have our cursor. Yeah. Seen better days. <laughs> So that's a pretty good start. Um, now we have to figure out what the what the uh, cursor is hovering over and select it. Yeah. So, um, where do you reckon, what, what do you reckon we do about that? Like, where do you reckon we do that? Well, if we're gonna do the the visual is king way, then maybe we start by. Uh drawing the boxes in the draw pass hmm. um although we don't yeah. have um 
sprite badge. Oh, we do. Oh, no, actually, uh, we don't have white pixel, but we can always add white pixel. White pixel is easy. Oh, I'm surprised. I thought you had white pixel in the template. Oh, well. I thought I did too, but I don't. Um, but white pixel is very simple. Uh, yep. Shall we... Okay. How will we do white? I'll, I'll let you do white pixel, because hopefully you remember it, because it's sort of seared yeah. into my brain. Yeah, something like new texture to the um, graphics. Where's my graphics device? It's right here. One, one. Um, I think that it does that. Where was I? The inline thing here. Uh, where the? Uh, wait a minute. So the only the problem color? is you you started that in. Uh... Sorry. Yeah, I just for some reason I thought I was no. I I don't. We say white pixel, but um, we decide what the color is. It's not like I just can't remember if I'm doing it right or not. Well, uh, the first problem is you've started that code in unload content rather than load content. So. <clears throat> oh what? <laughs> nice. That's not what I meant. I meant load content. Hopefully that's obvious. Yep. Um, but um, yeah, okay. And then... So okay. of course, and then, I mean, <clears throat> in unload content, obviously, dispose that sucker. Sort of. Sort of not, you know, that important, but, you know, may as well behave Good. nicely. Um, so there's one last thing to do, and so what we have now is you've got a white pixel. Oh, icon. I gotta. You haven't set actually the filled data. it. With I haven't set. Yeah, I haven't exactly. set data yet. Set data. Uh, rare. Uh, new. Uh, color. New color dot white. And fancy silly tool says I don't need that. So there we go. Excellent. Uh, all right, so we've got our white pixel. So now we can just draw. Um, so what we should do is scroll down to draw, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, okay, we've got our menu. Hmm. And we yeah. want to draw some pixels over it. We might, in fact, change uh, our, our, our happy friend Smiley to like pixel color, I don't know, red, green, I don't know, pick a color. Green's, uh, well, red's good on blue. Alright, and um, we might, <coughs> in fact, uh, no, scale it up. Okay. Slightly oh, bigger. yeah. Uh, oh, it's, for some reason, the way they've done these is just always breaks IntelliSense. Rotation origin scale of 20. That works. Uh, so that's a little less ridiculous than the thing. Although it still has our uh, fun little texture effect. So we'll just leave that in there. That's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, unintended, but welcome change. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Uh, yeah, cool. Um, I guess we didn't need the red at all. What about... Uh, okay, so this is, I guess, when you were talking about a design uh, issue, I guess if we wanted to do drawing, um, I guess we have to do it... Well, the spread branch is retained, so we can do it inside main menu, I guess, in the draw system. Right. Um, I guess that's the right spot for it. Certainly, I mean, this is uh, just debug drawing. So whatever whatever we're about to do, we're going to remove. Um, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> or severely change, so. Yeah, um, I guess it gets kind of, I mean, just, you know, I guess la labels, whether it's labels or checkboxes or what, I mean, there's still a bit of um, ceremony here because we have to, uh, we have to, to decide, I mean, for the for the labels, I guess it's fairly easy. We we can use like measure string, um, you know, that we get for free. But for the other stuff, like for the sliders and stuff, it might be. Uh, you you might you might know a better way to do it. I'm just thinking through. Like, there's 
um, what we're going to render, um, like when we actually make a sprite batch call, that seems fairly easy for these two. Um, I'm not sure it's that easy for the, you know, for the slider. Although it's it's just text at the end of the day, so maybe this doesn't matter. Well, well, the fact of the matter is, uh, <laughs> the only thing is calling drawstring. Uh, labels. Well, in fact, label and label. Oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that was um, an unnecessary anxiety I had. So yeah, these are the only things that are calling anything. So we can just do it right here. So whoopsie, yeah. sprite font. Uh, Measure string text that gives us what uh, the vector for the size, I guess, size f. Oh, no, it's yeah, it's a vector. Um, oh, it's just I guess we just want to. Oh, it's, oh, you could name it differently. Never mind. Oh, yeah, I don't know why mine's different actually. Yeah, yours is called Spark Font, mine's called Font. I'm just like, why is that not working? But if that makes sense. I'll just call, I'll just call mine Font. No reason to. Yeah. Not. Okay, and then um, yeah. So I guess that size can. I don't know. Well, hold on. I don't know if it account. I don't exactly know if this accounts for everything, but we could just try it. We could just draw a rectangle. We don't have any of our old cool, um, fancy methods for that that we had in the last project. Well, that's okay. I mean, you you have to start somewhere, but this is actually pretty simple. Like, is uh, well, we have the size. So, uh, size equals that. So we need the position, and um, that's also actually pretty simple. Um, right. Well, the position with the position we were deriving from this, right? I mean. So yes, I mean like this is. That is the position. The position. So we just grab that out. Yeah. Oh, white pixels uh, not here with us. He's uh, in another. Well, that's just gonna have to be done in a really hacky way. There you go. Yay! There's game development. So, you know, in a in a slightly more sane world, we might. Um... Yeah, you'd probably pass it. And... Yada, yada. Well, you recall we had a static class called white pixel that provided it, um, I believe. Certainly, that's what I usually do. Um, so it does need to be so public, dirty. I believe. Oh, yeah. So dirty. <laughs> oh, well. um, yeah. OK, so the position, and I guess we're looking, is this the right? Is this the right overload though? Because it's only giving it's giving us a source rectangle, and we can just we can just compute that, I guess, from uh, uh, well position zero the source, zero. The source the, rectangle is no. where in the texture you're accessing. So if you pass in null for source oh. rectangle, it'll just use the entire single white pixel, and that's typically what you want. Uh, okay, but if we but we haven't um we haven't touched we don't have we're not passing in any size in, information yet no so which we're, gonna... means we're using the wrong overload for this i think we need the so we need to make a we need to make a destination rectangle and a source rectangle right like uh or we pass it null for the source rectangle but the oh yeah we don't want this one at all do we well which one do you reckon we want well, we want to well we want to make a rectangle out of the size, right? I mean, so that size has got to be the destination rectangle, right? Um, okay, so we could do it with so des uh, yes destination rectangle. We could do it with the destination rectangle. However, there is a way to do it with the um, uh, vector position uh, using one of the other overloads. So obviously, uh, this destination huh. re destination destination rectangle has you know x y width height. So if we go to the overload with just position, that's just x y. So we need a way to pass in width. Oh uh, yeah, but that's actually I, honestly because uh, <laughs> we, we already have it. See the other ones. Yeah, I just I, I for some reason I forgot about this little stupid button, and there's so <laughs> many that I didn't, I didn't see the other ones. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah okay. Let's just keep keep going. My bad. No, don't worry. Um, I, I've got this API memorized. <laughs> it's like oh yeah. Yeah, I've had, I've had to implement it a few times. So. Yep. Uh, Android, remember? 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Sorry. Um, um, I don't know what color you picked. Um, I haven't picked one yet, so aqua sounds great. Oh, Although yeah, I'm going to multiply cut, it by cut. zero point five, so we can see stuff underneath it. Okay. Yeah, my intelligence literally breaks at this point, so I have to go off you. Okay. Well, okay. So you've got the texture that we want, which is white pixel. You've got the position, and you've got the source rectangle, which is null. And then you've got the color. Oh, whoops. Here. Oh, maybe I broke it because I didn't have the source. Yeah. So I, the order I of the say, arguments to this. Twenty ten. Yeah. <laughs> The order of the arguments to um, to uh, sprite batch dot draw makes IntelliSense kind of sad. Like it always does the wrong thing. Anyway, we want that. We want zero origin vectors. Um, and then the magic is we have to scale it. Oh, okay. You're gonna scale the white pixel to the. Um... And you're going to use the size as the scaler. Yeah. I guess that's pretty cool. It's pretty, uh, sort of, um, you know, see. minimal, if you like. Yeah, I'm into it. So this is, this is basically what you do when you have. That only, that only works because it's a solid object, right? Uh, how do you mean? Well, I mean, we, we just, we happen to know that our white pixel is like a solid texture like if we wanted to do like a border or whatever we couldn't just yeah we'd have to do something like something a little fancier uh but you have to do that in any case this, this is equivalent to the uh destination rectangle method of doing it however mm -hmm. if you were to do the destination rectangle you're basically taking these things which are floating point numbers a vector two converting them to integers which is the rectangle and then converting them back to floating point numbers within this draw so you may as well just huh. stick with the floating point version Cool. Okay, so let's grab our temporary bit of code here. Um, and in fact, we can grab the whole thing because it's equivalent Oop. and slap Oops. it into the other one. So I'm slapping mine into the string builder version, but you need to slap yours into uh, the text. I'm version. running ahead of you for no reason. Yeah, hold on. That's all right. Yeah. <clears throat> there we go. Code duplication this hits me in the feels, but <laughs> well, this is why I like how. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll just notice that I've just changed the spacing here, so I'm like, all right, these two methods are the same; they're highly related. So I'm going to put them together with like one line space here, and then I just put like three lines here and three lines here. So it's like, guys, if you look at you know the code and you're scrolling through, it's like, oh, label, label. Let's look at both of them at once. And it's like, oh, they're exactly the same. If this were any larger, I'd be like that in both of them. But seeing as there are only five lines and this is going away, no big deal. Right on. <laughs> so, yeah. I also notice one little thing that yes, I don't see everybody else doing. But you you use zeros. You use basically like value literals for um, the default of the enumeration. Yeah. A lot of people do that verbose thing um, but it means the same thing so it's cool to use to use zero yeah um, it's just it's like we don't care at all about the sprite effects so it's like we don't want that to take any space out because obviously <laughs> you know with coding reading is the big deal right I just like the I just like the fact that you, you found a way to communicate a semantic difference between sprite effects dot none and zero zero means I didn't consider it versus sprite effects dot none means I needed it like I'm communicating like an intent you exactly. Know what I mean? exactly which is really cool yes all right well this looks nice and works so we've got our got our uh, thing so that just tells us we've now calculated the uh, external rectangles so now I think we have reached uh, the hour of of uh, recording so we'll finish yeah. off here but so what we need to do now is like figure out a way to go from this mouse position these rectangles that we've calculated to um, a thing that changes this selection carrot so we'll work on that next time all right thank you for watching everyone and we'll see you next time